Five Factors for Nonstick Eggs. Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. To get nonstick eggs in stainless steel, cast iron, and carbon steel skillets, pay attention to these five factors, and you'll be sliding your eggs like a pro in no time. The five factors are the eggs, the pan, butter, heat, and timing. For people with internet ADD, we'll first zip through kind of an executive summary demonstration of how to slide an egg. Afterwards, we'll explain things in step-by-step -step detail for those who want to know a little bit more about how and why this works. The quick version. Step one, take your egg out of the fridge, crack it into a bowl, and let it rest for at least 10 minutes. Step two, use a quality pan. Three, preheat your pan on medium. Four, use a tablespoon of butter. Five, and this is critical, after the bubbling stops, count to five and gently pour in your egg. Six, wait until the whites set up around the edges, then shake the pan and the eggs should slide. Easy enough. Now for the full version with more detail, we'll walk through everything step by step. Here we're going to first focus on getting your eggs to slide and be non-stick. So initially we're going to use a little extra heat and butter. Once you get the hang of that and you get your eggs sliding, we'll show you how to dial things back a little bit so that the eggs cook a little bit more slowly and stay more tender and delicious, yet continue to be non-stick. Let's go through the five factors. Factor one, the eggs. Take your egg out of the fridge and crack it into a bowl and let it rest for at least 10 minutes before you are ready to cook. Why? Well, my fridge is set at 34 degrees, barely above freezing, and certainly below the body temp of the average chicken. It's hard to cook an almost frozen egg. Let your eggs warm up a little bit before cooking them. And cracking them into a bowl allows you to later gently put them into a hot pan, prevents accidentally breaking the yolk or dropping shell pieces in the pan when it's go time. Factor two, the pan. You need a good quality pan. To illustrate, here are three of my all-time favorites, each with different materials and cooking surfaces, but you can slide an egg on each. This is a nine and a half inch de Bouillé French carbon steel omelet pan. Got a good seasoning on it, has nice curved sides for flipping eggs and sliding them on the plates, or perhaps a piece of homemade toast. Probably my favorite pan in the whole world. Here's a classic 10 inch Lodge cast iron pan, also seasoned. It's a little heavier and takes a little longer to heat. Has steeper angled sides, great for cooking eggs, just maybe not for flipping them. Probably still need to use a spatula here. And finally, this is a Maviel 250B, eight inch stainless steel lined copper, Really beautiful high-end pan. You're still cooking eggs on stainless steel though. Now the differences in the pans for fried eggs, I really find the carbon steel to be easiest personally. I can kind of use it on autopilot. Now the cast iron is kind of in the middle ground and for non-stick eggs on stainless steel, I can do it, but I find that I really need to pay attention and bring my A game. Okay, now for the other three factors, the butter, the heat, and the timing. These are all interrelated and here, butter is the key to success. Why? because the butter will tell us two things. One, if the pan is preheated properly, and two, the timing of when to add the eggs. Now, how can butter tell us that? Remember that besides fat, butter contains a lot of water. When you put butter in a hot pan, it's going to melt and bubble and crackle and steam. That's the water content boiling, turning to steam and evaporating away, which takes heat along with it. And that in turn regulates the temp of the pan until all that water is gone. Then the temperature of the remaining butter fat will start to rise. And if you let it go long enough, it's eventually gonna brown. Now there is a window between the time when the butter stops crackling and bubbling and when it starts to brown that turns out to be a great time to add the eggs. So when do you add the butter to the pan? Well, you preheat your pan first, then add the butter. If the butter just barely starts melting, your pan is not hot enough. If it flashes immediately into steam going crazy, it's way too hot. But if it melts and bubbles and crackles, it's just right. So let's put this into practice and show how it works. My eggs have been resting in their bowls for at least 10 minutes. I'm going to start with the carbon steel pan on a small gas burner. I'm going to start heating the pan at a shade over medium heat, but not on high or even medium high. Here is where you're going to need to experiment a little bit to find the right burner and the right preheating time for your pan and stovetop. But remember, the butter is going to tell you when you have it right. Now I'm using about a tablespoon of butter here, and immediately somebody's going to say that with that much butter, of course nothing sticks. But that is not exactly true. I'll show you why here in just a minute. So add the butter and notice the nice crackling and bubbling. The pan is at a good temp. And here's the key, wait until the bubbling and crackling stops. 
If the butter is still bubbling a lot, it's still got water in it, and you'll be kind of sort of boiling your egg if you add it too early. When it stops bubbling, the water is gone and only the butter fat remains. You now have a window in which to add your egg before the butter browns. Wait until the white's set up, maybe 20 seconds or so in a hot pan, then give it a shake and it should release and slide. Now because we're using a hotter pan for this demonstration, the end of the bubbling and the setup of the egg is going to happen quickly because the pan is so hot. I think it helps a little bit in learning how to slide the eggs. When I flip the egg, you can see that some of the butter has browned. These eggs will be a little bit hard, they'll have a harder yolk, maybe a little bit tougher whites. Later, after you've gotten the hang of how to slide the eggs, you can start dialing that temperature back down so that the eggs cook a little more slowly, the whites will stay tender, and the yolks will be nice and runny. We're learning to slide first, then we'll focus on adding deliciousness. Now back to the amount of butter. Watch this. Here's the exact same carbon steel pan, same batch of eggs from the supermarket, same burner, and same amount of butter. And this egg sticks. Why? The heat and timing were off and the egg stuck, even with lots of butter. So it's not just the butter, it's not just the pan, it's everything. You got to get all five factors correct to slide your eggs. Now let's take a look at the cast iron, same process. Now this pan is heavier and bigger. It's gonna take a little bit longer to heat, about a minute longer in my case. And again, I know that just from practicing, but the butter is gonna tell me that I'm doing it correctly. I put my butter in, it crackles and bubbles. I wait for that to stop. I count to five, in goes the egg, wait for the setup and boom, sliding in cast iron. Now let's go lower and slower with the heat. You have to pay more attention here, but if you do, you can still have sliding nonstick eggs, but they cook a little more slowly, which keeps the whites from getting too tough. They stay nice and tender and still slide around. So here, let's jump up to a little bit more difficult level to show how it works. With this fancy Maviel stainless steel line pan, you aren't supposed to heat a copper pan dry and empty. So I go ahead and put the butter in first and slide it around to coat the bottom of the pan as soon as it starts melting. I'm going with lower heat here and watching it very closely. Now the butter is still going to bubble and crackle. It's just gonna happen more slowly and you really have to pay attention because it's not quite as obvious when that bubbling and crackling stops. So once that bubbling and crackling seems to have stopped, I gently pour in the egg. And here I wait about a full minute before I do anything. In that hot pan, I was shaking and sliding the pan after 15, 20 seconds. Here I'm waiting more than a full minute before I even give the pan a jiggle. The egg is cooking much more slowly, then I give it a shake and boom. Note that when you cook more slowly, the butter is not browned, it's not cooked at too high of a heat. The egg whites are still staying actually white, so a much more tender, more delicious egg here. But then again, eggs are all about personal preference. If you like a little bit of that brown butter flavor, a little bit harder yolk, by all means use the hotter pan. If you like a more tender white with a runnier center, use the lower, slower cooking method. Now you can cook slowly in the other pans as well. You just have to pay more attention. It's easier to start with hotter pans. Then when you get the hang of sliding the eggs, gradually start dialing back the heat a little bit each time you cook an egg until you find that sweet spot for your stove and pan. You want the eggs to cook nicely and still slide around. And that's how you do it. Follow these five factors, get a dozen eggs and a stick of butter and spend an afternoon practicing and your breakfast will never be the same again. Now, if you want one of these pans for yourself, check out the shopping links below. For more fun in the kitchen, check out the rest of our videos and we'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.